Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. This is uh, Franz Cantor, cartoonist, um, illustrator, <laughs> every little bit of everything, tinker, table spy. I'm doing another drawing and um, probably can't tell from this uh, little thumbnail here. Now, I normally draw um, very, very small because I can sort of man manipulate and move quite rapidly around the drawing. Um, and it's kind of a nice sort of intimate uh, way of um, starting a sketch or an idea. So I can propagate over a page, you know, a lot of different versions of, um, you know, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to draw. Um, I'm very interested in balance, which is uh, like the relationships between the forms and the space that they occupy. So usually have some kind of a framing device that locks the shape into position and try to gives us gives us a, a kind of a, a balance between the left and right. I use this as an analogy a lot, but and I'm going to get this probably wrong. That's the yin and yang symbol. So the yin and yang symbol is the it's it's a symbol for balance, the Buddha symbol for balance. So what it means is um, the same amount of area is involved in to create a, a unity or a balance. The same amount of area. So you know positive versus negative. So this is what we're, we're talking about when we're talking about composition. One of the strongest elements of composition, especially in publishing or in any kind, in any painting uh, where, you know, um, a lot of the, the visual elements are locked in place. Um, one of the strongest elements of composition, there are many different elements of composition. We can talk about that another time. But one of the strongest one is negative space. And that kind of locks the positive elements, this object, in place. So the subject I'm drawing today is Matt Gruning. And this, this is him. Matt Gruning, of course, is the father of The Simpsons. This is a fantastic resource that came out a few years ago, The Simpsons Handbook. And um, we're going to be drawing him now. Obviously, he's... Um, He's responsible for a lot of our uh, childhood um, titles. The Simpsons have been going for over 30 years. So it's a very, very, if not the longest running, continuous running program. Um, certainly the longest, the best longest running program. I still find it really interesting to watch The Simpsons today, especially you know, around Halloween. So you get the Treehouse of Horror. So, um, just very quickly, um, this is a lovely little sketch, isn't it? This is a sketch by um, uh, Matt Grinning doing Seth McFarlane on the left and Seth McFarlane drawing Matt Grinning on the right, which is really clever. So, there you go. The two, mate, the, the, the two shows that I uh, continually watch, uh, just adore them. So we're probably going to work from this uh, benign looking shot of uh, Matt. This, I think this is quite uh, recent. So we're going to be looking from that. So he's obviously, you know, uh, very pleased with, not him, very pleased with his uh, creations. He's an incredible um, visual communicator. Um, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little while, but the process of creating a cartoon series, as you can probably imagine, uh, comes from a, um, uh, a visual vocabulary that is really, really strong and very, very versatile. So usually when we're talking about communication like English, for example, English is an incredibly versatile language. So it can adapt things, you know, it can create brand new words out of nothing or out of an association like magic, you know, a little bit of Latin, a little bit of French, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and create a brand new 
context, a brand new word. And this is evident in, you know, the, the dictionary every year getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, they, they cull a lot of the words from the 1900s or whatever, the antique words out of the uh, system. But it's an incredibly versatile language. And cartoons, are, as you can imagine, is a visual language and it's incredibly versatile. Now, to have somebody that, that is in our public uh, mind for 30 years with a show, with a universe, it basically create a universe that is quite um, stable, They've got stable characters that we can't, we know, we're, we're familiar with. And you can keep adding new contexts and new characters and build the universe. So, you know, the, we talk about in, in the process, the animation Bible, which is everything, all of the elements drawn up, drawn up in a book um, that comprise the whole show. So all of the characters, the turnarounds, etc., the props, uh, the settings, everything are in this uh, in this book called the animators, the animation bible for each production. The Simpsons one would be huge, would be absolutely huge. It would be a library. There's so many assets. There's such an incredibly rich, diverse world. So what I've done here, I've chosen this particular shape. Now go back to the photograph that I was looking for. Um, I kind of get an impression of a straight edge here and a round edge around the cheek here. So the, f the face is actually a three-quarter view, slightly favored towards the front, but I've kind of twisted it even a little bit more because what I'd like to do is to get a bit of dynamic um, movement or dynamic shape into the uh, face itself, into the process. Um, what else? The other thing that we wanted to uh, talk about, of course, is the recognition of the character is in the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, which is kind of representative of the um, this uh, T shape, in a way. So you've got the eyes, and you've got the, the nose, and you've got the mouth in this configuration. So why is this important? Because when you recognize somebody, you go for the basic elements, which are, you know, this, right? Everything else could be changed. Um, so that's sort of more or less generic. But the, the facial features this, in this T-zone, this, this particular area, the eyes and nose and the mouth, are very important in recognizing the, who it is. In, in you know forming a, a relationship on paper so it relates to the person that uh, that you're drawing the subject okay um, I think that's about it the the rest of it is you know the the shape that I've gone for is I like simple shapes so starting with a simple shape as a premise and then delivering details within that uh, architecture that new area that you've created so it's a little bit of graphic design, if you will, and a little bit of cartoon, which gives you a bit of dynamic license to simplify. And then, you know, because it's the simple forms, you can ex exaggerate elements uh, in terms of proportion and, you know, whatever you feel like. All right, so I've taken the opportunity of drawing this up on the gray paper. And we're gonna be using gray paper because we're gonna be creating a sculptural style drawing. In other words, I'm going to be using three color pencils, the brown pencil, the black pencil, that's a polychromo, which is a hard pencil. It's a Prismacolor, which is soft. And we're going to be using another, <laughs> it's a bit, bit worn, it needs a holder. This is a white Prismacolor, which are, I mean, they're quite soft. Okay, so those three pencils uh, with gray tone paper, can be buff paper, you know, like a brown paper, or any kind of paper, green paper. Uh, fairly soft and neutral so that you can, it doesn't, you know, the color doesn't sort of compete too much uh, for attention, okay? Because what we're essentially doing is creating a drawing that has um, tonal properties that describe form, right? So if you, if you think back to what the, the main elements of art, all art is, is comprised of 
like seven elements, right? One would be line, um, then would the, there would be shape. Okay, so I'm using line, I'm describing a shape. This shape is chosen by me as a way of describing the person. Okay, it's not in any way designed to be um, uh, correct proportions. The idea of caricature is an invitation to have fun, to, dis to describe things differently. So to move the goalposts in the game. The game is still in progress, but you're moving the goalposts around so it's a bit more dynamic. Um, the, once you have the line and the shape, you can describe uh, using tone, which is another element of art, light and shade to create a sense of form. Form is a three-dimensional property. Is a, this is the reason why we're using um, three-color pencils. So uh, tonally, the brown pencil is closest to the gray paper. So this is where we're starting with the process. And then we're going to get into the shadows with the black pencils and the highlights with the white pencil. Essentially, you're painting light. And with this, you're painting shadows. Or, sorry, drawing shadows and drawing light. Um, there is an indication of color with the brown, the warmth of the uh, paper, of the uh, pencil, of course. Um, so that's another element of art. There's uh, texture. We've got the texture of the face, obviously the beard, you know, the hair, um, the, the texture of the paper itself helps uh, create an illusion of skin texture, perhaps. Um, you know, the, the, the pencil texture. It's a way of controlling or indicating or alluding to something that is more than the drawing, right? So you've got a subject which you're obviously fixated and focused on and you'd be really um, studying it, studying the reference and responding to it. Um, the other thing is space, which we're alluding to by having this uh, compositional element of the frame. So let's try to get into some uh, details of the face and uh, see how far we can get. This is a live drawing, of course, so I've kind of taken this uh, step to jump into the drawing a little bit of the process because this working out method actually takes me about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Just this, just to work out something that I respond to. If I respond to it, then I can fairly, I can be fairly confident that I can uh, finish the job and, and to a, a, a higher standard. So this more um, more satisfying. <clears throat> more fun, in other words. You know, because uh, drawing, drawing should be fun. We, we draw when we're kids and we have fun. You know, uh, I've done this professionally for many years, but um, I always try to have fun with the process itself and enjoy the process. It doesn't matter whether it's, it's on a deadline or you're being paid for it or whatever. It has to be enjoyable. Otherwise, I don't believe you're going to get a good result. Um, I think it becomes like a chore then. And, you know, chores you sort of... Um, decide you don't want to do it. It's like homework on the weekend. You know, you leave it till the last minute, Monday morning or <laughs> Sunday, 12, 12 midnight, you know. Um, you just don't want to do it because it's a chore. And drawing should not be that. Drawing should be like um, almost an exercise in, in, it's not relaxing, it's intensive. It's quite, it's quite intense work because you're investigating something, but it's, it's something of interest to you. So that's why you spend, you should spend a lot of time investigating and drawing it, right? It's how we, you know, we're very good at that. We get invested in games and um, there's something wrong with the, with the eyes, I think I'm, I have to simplify this to work, I think. So um, 
Yeah, we invest our time in games. We get very involved in movies and, and shows and things. You know, we binge watch. So this, we have the ability to, to be uh, enveloped or involved really deeply into subjects that interest us. And for quite long hauls, you know. So as opposed to, you know, a lot of people saying, uh, our attention span is less now because of social media, uh, etc. I don't believe that's true. I think it's actually more intensely um, focused. And, you know, like, for example, people on TV bemoaning the fact that uh, the audience doesn't want to watch their television shows anymore, citing the fact of social media reduces our attention span, yada, yada, yada. I think it's more to do with the, uh, the subject. The shows are not that interesting. So, I mean, even if you, you know, I <coughs> occasionally turn on the television stupidly thinking that something good will be on. And then realizing it's, <laughs> it's annoying. Um, and not as good as it used to be, you know. And, you know, when I was a kid, I was spoiled. I, I watched a lot of TV, a lot of TV. And, you know, we, basically you're talking about the 60s and 70s. So you had, you know, as far as I was, I was concerned that their shows were really well presented, really well done, you know especially cartoon shows like, dare I say, the Flintstones. Let's bring it back on topic. Nice segue, yeah? Flintstones were television's cartoon family, first cartoon family before The Simpsons. And like The Simpsons, they were a, a dysfunctional family focused on Fred Flintstone, who was the, the main character, the father figure. The other character, the children were not really developed. Bam Bam, and who was Barney's child, and in Pebbles, they weren't really developed past, you know, um, Goo Goo Gaga, sort of like Maggie in uh, The Simpsons. So they're not articulate and like Bart or um, moralistic like Lisa. So we're so familiar with. Um, the characters of the Simpsons, they're becoming our family almost. They're so familiar to us. Which is real I find that really interesting, you know. <clears throat> because um we've invested so much time in the in the show, in The Simpsons, where we're involved in the Simpsons universe. And um I mean you can say, you know, oh, I've grown up, I don't watch The Simpsons anymore, you know, I watch um, this show or that show or anime or whatever, but I promise you, um, if The Simpsons came on television and it was a new or a, even a familiar uh, story, like a repeat, you'd be watching it. And we will have our favourite Simpsons uh, tropes, our favorite Simpsons gags, you know. Mine has always been <clears throat> like the um, the Stonecutters, right? So it was even the silly song of the Stonecutters, um, the Secret Society. It's a sort of a pun on um, on uh, the Freemasons. And the the you know the the fictional Illuminati etc. Um, don't get me started on the Illuminati, whether it be fiction. Yeah, it's fiction. Of course, it's fiction. <coughs> Nothing in life is that interesting. It's all uh, <laughs> just being silly. But the um, Flintstones, getting back to it, is uh, was the first television family, and you know we were invested in their antics and you know the life of uh, of Fred, and became very. It's a very interesting thing, isn't it, to be 
involved in characters that are essentially made up. Um, and not only made up, but they're, they're, they're not even pretending to be real. You know, it's not like a like Leave It to Beaver or something, uh, or Beverly Hillbillies, where you've got actors pretending to be people that uh, that we know or grow to know. Um, these are cartoon characters, so you know they're not real. Um, they're obviously not real, and yet there's a sort of magic moment where you become invested in the characters and involved in their stories. And I find that really fascinating. That's a that's a sort of a magic, um, m the magic part of uh, of cartoons. So, like the Flintstones, the Simpsons, of course, created a family and a dysfunctional family that we can um, enjoy the antics of. And <clears throat> extended beyond that, like with the Flintstones, you've got the neighbors and then Fred's boss and, you know, um, and then other elements, other people that come in and out of their world. Um, the Simpsons grew into a huge world. Like a, if, if you were to take every character that appeared on the Simpsons and celebrities too. I mean, the Flintstones did that as well, you know, with Anne Margaret and... Um, Hoagie Carmichael, a lot of uh, actors at the time in the early 60s <clears throat> appeared on the show, even Samantha from Bewitched. So that was that's nothing new. So The Simpsons, in a way, uh, took up the mantle that was already left lying around by, by The Simpsons. And... Um, and they took it incredibly, you know, um, to incredible heights over 30 years um, and still with steam. So it's still, you know, it hasn't run out of um, opportunities and stories. So it's still quite vibrant. There's still a lot of life there, you know. Um, a lot of people like myself, for a while, I really preferred Disenchantment or um, Futurama, you know. And a lot of people prefer actually Grinick's um, comic work. His, you know, his little panel stories. Um, the, um, uh, what's it called? Life in Hell. But um, I just, I really, you must, you must understand how significant this is. The Simpsons are an incredible achievement. So where the Flintstones left off, the Simpsons picked up that mantle of a cartoon family on TV. And really, uh, you know, created a universe not just a world you talk about world building like um, Miyazaki creates a world for 90 minutes or you know two hours so you can really sit and enjoy a immersive uh, environment characters in this fantasy world um, The Simpsons is uh, an incredible concept of world building you know where there is a familiarity with the uh, with Springfield that we all feel and we know we kind of sort of know the elements of Springfield we know our way around town <laughs> that's amazing I never knew my way around bedrock but Springfield you kind of know and occasionally you'll get a vista, you'll get some, a character standing back looking at the, the landscape, you know, the harbour, the town square, 
the suburban, the suburban streets, the church, the school. You know, this is it is a this is familiar territory for us, and I find that really incredibly fascinating. How did this happen? It's it's the magic of cartoons. Cartoons have that that uh, ability to draw us into the story and um, we become passionate advocates for for the work for the characters and every other show picks up that mantle I remember going to meetings at uh, afters on uh, the Simpsons <laughs> And everybody was, of course, after replicating the, that success. And this is going, you know, probably the fourth or fifth year. So it was like a, a back then it was an amazing achievement. And then you had um, incredible um, shows like Family Guy. But before Family Guy, of course, there was South Park. So it's the same, exactly the same thing. Um, you're creating this, this powerful narrative, this visual narrative that has this, this world and these characters that inhabit the world. And we become invested in the, in the characters. They become important to us. So that's a really... In, you know, it's um, it's something that it seems so obvious when you look at it at face value, but really, it's an incredible achievement, and it's a like a shining a torch down an unfamiliar road or a road that we've forgotten was there. It was always there. You know, it was always there. The road was always there. It was, it was carved out by Fred and Barney. But, um, you know, many creators kind of, you know, forget that and um, do something else. But the more you invest into that world building activity, the more it, it becomes its own work, its own, has its own um, gravitas, its own, what's the word, um, sense of um, being, it kind of takes off on its own. All right, so I've created this uh, tonal, uh, quite, all the details are there in place. So, Pardon me. What I'm going to do now is just to use the black pencil and the white pencil to create tonal variation so that I can get a sense of um, texture and volume. So white pencil you can see quite well on the, um, on the brown, on the grey paper. So it's actually um, designed to give you, a, a, meet you halfway the paper. So you don't have to worry about establishing a lot of tone, half tone, it's already there for you. So what you have to do is help it along. So it's a bit harder with a white paper, of course, than you've got to, you have to create all of this tone. This one is sort of meeting you halfway. All right, um, let's try some black, get some black in. So I'm going, I'm not doing one color and then another color and then another color. I'm trying to interrupt my flow, but again, you know, <clears throat> going back to the concept of the T-zone, I'm <clears throat> concentrating heavily on the features of the face, primarily the eyes, start with the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So a lot of the muscles, you'll appreciate this, a lot of the muscles connect, right? Muscles around the eyes connect with the face, with the rest of the face, you know, primarily through 
uh, these sort of um, rings around the nose and around the mouth itself. So they're designed for an incredible amount of activity, um, micro expressions uh, that people are really, really good at. We are incredible visual communicators through this medium, the face. And to really have the ability to work with such a, a, a versatile uh, machine, like drawing this machine, is really joyous for me. It's a, it's a great experience. Every time I draw a face, I learn something brand new. And, you know, it's, I'm starting fresh. There's no sort of like a, a method that is 100% foolproof. You find your way through these lines, through these, the pencil strokes. You find your method, you find your relevance, you find your truth in a way with these pencil strokes. So you're kind of responding in a way that's appropriate. So it's not like ad hoc, but it's a, an appropriate response to the reference material and to how you represented or changed that, uh, that, uh, co uh, those ideas, the proportions and the details and things, how you change them and work with them in a dynamic fashion with the drawing. Maybe a lot to take in, but, you know, suffice it to say this. When you draw, you're doing something really bizarre. It's quite special and can't be replicated by machines, computers, programs, filters. It's just too weird. Um, you know, and often said this, that if there's life out there in the universe, um, you're probably not going to find them as bizarre as us. So they're going to be very normal. They're not going to be drawing, probably. You know, they're going to be scientists or, or something. You're not going to have Picassos on other planets. There's something uniquely special about humans. And um, one is their ability to, to create this dialogue with their face. So it's a whole universe of expressions that have meaning, right? They emote ex um, feelings. They show feelings through this mechanism <clears throat> and tell stories. And the other thing is drawing a face is a very bizarre activity. You know, um, we often, we love to look at monkeys and you know, chimps or whatever, elephants, you know, drawing. Oh, isn't he clever? He's got a paintbrush in his trunk and, you know, well, the, the, the monkey's drawing a banana or something, you know. <laughs> Generally, they don't draw elements, uh, things like that. They're, look, animals are beautiful um, creatures, but they're very different to us and I don't know whether this is a, a, a thing about evolution I, I just don't know about that I just think we've kind of evolved into this very strange um, being generally speaking and uh, you know, it's almost like an appreciation for poetry or, or music. <clears throat> um, drawing is the same level of strangeness that uh, comes from a, a, some unknown zone. We just don't know. But it's entertaining and it's fun. And that's all I need to know. It's good fun. I love the idea of, of learning, you know, anatomy by constructing it. 
you know so the shape of eyes for example you know most people when we first start out we have a symbol system of creating symbols we love creating symbols don't we so you know an eye symbol would be this <clears throat> you know um, and that's fine but really to get some kind of um, shape and, and you know dynamics and life into this uh, this eye rather than a symbol symbols are cool I mean you know <laughs> they're fantastic things but if you want to break away from break away from the symbol um, and to create just sort of see where you can go with realistic uh, with a, a more realistic approach then I think that's worth worthwhile looking at you know so we tend to um, I think settle too much for something before we have a chance to really think about the um, the subject the topic it's everything is worthwhile looking at deeper just look at it don't assume the lips are a certain shape or the ears or the face or the eyes you know don't assume everything is the same it's not look for differences look for sort of you know, little things that stand out that are that can teach you something fresh you know, and I, I really love that uh, aspect. Some great lines here. He's got a, a undeniably peaceful uh, expression. I know he's he's he, he's a very dynamic, um, very dynamic uh, personality. But this kind of a smugness, a um, little bit of bark in him, highly intelligent, very, very accurate, uh, sort of uh, depictions of life and motivations. Simpsons, in many ways, is a very um, uh, much more emotional journey than say the Flintstones were the characters tend to have you know these um, big uh, not adventures but uh, issues that they have to face they have to tackle so you know it, it, it creates a sense of drama I guess that's also you know people y you need that sense of drama I think for a, lo a, a show that that uh, has um, or achieves such longevity I think you need to be it's it's entertaining but to have the drama play out with these cartoon characters is quite uh, it's quite novel we care about them that's a really interesting thing, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, cartoon characters. But you care about the cartoon characters. You care what happens to them in some way. You may not admit it, but you do because you're, you're watching the show. It took me a while to warm to Disenchantment. And, you know, and to be honest, it took me a while to warm to Futurama as well. Um, I mean, the two characters that stand out for me from Futurama are Bender, obviously, and Zoidberg. Uh, I think that they're they're more they're not subtle. <laughs> they're, they're the opposite of subtle. So, um, creating a sense of contrast, the black uh, pencil gives you a lot of uh, ability to create <clears throat> a contrasting uh, narrative of light and shade. 
so this probably should have um, I get an impression the mouth is a lot smaller than I've drawn it up I know this is more proportionate but uh, I think I uh, if I was to sketch this out again I'd probably try to push the mouth into itself more right so just helping the brown tone the black pencil um, works really well over the brown pencil because it just uh, gives it uh, keeps its warmth uh, obviously but um, increases the dramatic element of uh, contrast so I'm working with what's underneath the brown pencils created a, a nice level of detail I'm just sharpening up that detail even more uh, and the lights and darks so the the, the contrasting parts of the of the uh, reference I'm trying to sort of pick out and use that as a way of uh, enhancing these the drama of this uh, of this story so Everything you look at doing caricatures or which is simplification and exaggeration of all of these different elements. So a caricature of each eye, a caricature of the nose, the ears, etc. Sometimes you simplify right, in order to, um, to create the right emphasis. That's, the, that's a nice uh, description, emphasis. Um, Noses are not as simple as this, nor are parts of the ear as simple as this. But I've made it so because the emphasis is overall. It's the simplicity of the shape. Remember, this is a sort of a, a lovely um, compound shape. It's almost like a B, an italic B, capital B. So they're you know, simple shapes that we respond to and make the elements, the details, for, uh, force them to fit into that, uh, that, new, air, that new narrative, that new, um, the new rules. I'm just going to simplify the hair here a little bit. Um, I've got a few other tools which I'll discuss in a moment. Those are paint tools like um, Posca markers, which are opaque um, uh, paint markers. And uh, I'll talk about them um, in a bit. I just uh, thought I'd get over this um, some of these uh, shapes here, these details. Now, the outer out, the outs, the outer out. The outline, the contour of the face, of the head, sorry. Um, I generally, I like the idea of making those lines bolder, thicker, because they have to relate to the background. They've got to sit into the background. And even if I keep a color, like a white or a black, uh, a slightly uh, away from the contour, from the line work, um, the line work, the outer line work, can, and I feel that it needs to be stronger and can be stronger. Whereas the, the, the details, the contours inside the shape, inside the head, like the mouth and the nose and, it's, and the eyes, etc., can, uh, can be more subtle. So those outlines can be uh, thinner. That's generally, you know, how I work. Um, pencils, again, how, how many times do I have to say this? A pencil can reproduce hair, fur, beard, really, really quickly. Look how quick that is. Boom, 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 boom. And it looks like fur. It looks like uh, whiskers. You know, it's terrific. Um, it's made for that sort of responsiveness. That, that It just looks the part, you know. You study the, the direction of each hair and you make a sort of a, a concerted effort to replicate the, that direction.
The other thing too, um, when you when you draw, don't rush things. It's nice to be quick, but at the expense of uh, you know an opportunity that you may miss um, if you rush things too much. There is an opportunity here, actually, that I might miss, which is to create this shadow. Uh, I'm just exaggerating the shadow from the photograph. It's not actually there, um, but it feels like it should be there because of the... Um, I've got this kind of a, a light direction coming in from the, from the top. And of course, because of the positioning of this fringe, uh, it would be throwing a shadow over the face. So I don't want to make the the um, make the forehead. It needs to be thicker, I think. But this um, hair here needs to be light, loose. So I'm just creating these individual hairs hoping that they will bunch in a way that makes sense okay well I've lost a little bit of the top form but uh, I can fix that with this Okay, just continue on. So this B shape, this capital B shape, is um, actually giving me uh, a very good, um, strong container for these details. It seems to be quite uh, relevant. There's a bit of shadow I'm missing from. So, you know, continually looking at uh, the contrasts within the, the forms, within the elements that you're doing. Um, going back, checking them, whether they're dark enough or strong enough or light enough. You know, it's a very um, important part of the process. Um, as long as it doesn't... Uh, interfere with your flow which is the progression of your work of the drawing so always try not to interrupt your drawing on a tangent you know this is a tangent and go off but I want to get enough of him done before I I go into into that uh, too much the little character in the background but Alright, so let's help out the framing a little bit better. I'm dragging the paper uh, around so. Ooh, <laughs> I've gone up. There you go. And you don't use a, a ruler. That's what happens. So I'm dragging the paper around so I don't lean on this. You know, the color pencil is not as. Um, uh, smudgy as uh, graphite of course but uh, you, you know you just you want to try to keep it as clean as you can I haven't counted the serrated uh, hair, so I'm just hoofing it. That's good enough. It's not exactly, you know, Bart, but uh, it'll do at a pinch. So while we're 
we're down here we'll finish off the name tag again I'm using the I'm going over the brown pencil with the black so it's just clarifying that line it's already there um, I'm using the warmth of the brown to create that homogeneous color sense of color so it's all generally you know quite a warm um, effect right let's uh, try some our hand at the white pencil now. so where we've uh, built up a bit of uh, contrasting shiny bits um, the idea is to sort of you know gradually create that uh, you're not coloring in you're creating texture now so the light is to create and form um, the white pencil to create a little bit of form to have things you know come forward from the uh, the, the tonal paper um, and also textural properties of things you know because the skin very interesting uh, has different shiny bits and matte bits you know all over there's also the um, I like to create this sort of side light in a way a rim light on some of the forms it helps to establish a more um, three-dimensional uh, property in the in the, the drawing um, so it's a, it's an indicator of uh, roundness if you will so I'm going to hit this with a Posca marker in a few minutes which will help the contrast even more that will also help the hair as well so again you're not using the pencil to color in you're creating a sense of shine texture difference between everything else so you, you're actually using the gray toned paper um, it does a lot of the heavy lifting you know it's a really good thing I'd be here twice as long if I had to build this tone out of white paper um, this just gives me a better chance of uh, of putting in the right uh, details All right what am I going to do here okay so ears are very interesting because it you know they're within such a small area you get an incredible amount of texture um, there's this sometimes there's a sort of a peach fuzzy effect which softens the highlights on the outer areas of the ear and then the inside of course it's very reflective because it's very shiny so it kind of uh, disobeys a lot of the um, <clears throat> properties of light and form you know sometimes you get like a, a hot spot inside the ear which is there's nowhere near the light but because it's so shiny and reflective because of the you know the oils and textures etc um, it just reflects more light therefore it's lighter so it's an interesting thing the, the, the variety of textures in a human face is amazing it's really incredibly um, fun to draw incredibly fun to draw you know the, the variety the wet spots the dry spots the coarse spots the smooth spots the fuzzy spots the smooth spots it's just so, so much variety and um, it's a lot of fun so this soft pencil can create quite harsh lights you know the harder you press of course the harder that highlight is so you can see um, and you can kick it out even more I'll do that in, in a moment with the uh, Posca markers so the Posca markers that I've chosen they come in many different colors but obviously uh, because of this uh, um, 
tonal drawing I'm using of black I'll be using white and, and black as the just to help out you don't have to use them but I just think it's uh, dramatic to to use them um, on a drawing as long as it doesn't take too long um, they are called paint markers but I'm using them to draw with love all this uh, beard you know the the um, the light beard shapes around uh, faces uh, men's faces especially when they start to gray like this they create a lot of dynamic um, sh uh, uh, spots of detail tiny detail it's great fun There we go. So we'll enhance that a little bit with the um, with the paint marker as we go. It's a bit of a a bulge coming out under the chin. Try to capture that. Uh, as it's relevant and of course uh, but so okay all right, so now um, these different size markers, these are paint pens which have got a little ball bearing in them. And uh, these are really nice, these are Poskas. So I'm going to be using these for um, putting in some very, very white spots, highlights. So again, you know, sparingly, this is the these are very dramatic things so take your time and create something that is appropriate and not um, over you don't over, want to overdo these uh, highlights they're there to create a sense of contrast sparkle just uh, complement the highlight on the nose with a stronger side light on this right hand side just a little bit So build one up on the left, but not as uh, not as strong. Just a little bit of a balance.
lots of wayward, tiny wayward hairs which we can play with to get a bit of detail. I'd like to break the that line a little bit too. It's, it's quite nicely um, handling the hair. This pen. Fairly quick. Messy details. Need, uh, oh, that's it'll do. I think it's fine. I was going to say it might be a little bit messy, but I think for what it is, it's, a, it's cool. Alright, so uh, what else can we do? What more mischief can we play here? There's, um, as I've done with the white, you know, and the white uh, paint marker, I can use probably this is a zig. <clears throat> brush pen I think this is the Z brush pen so um, this is going to give us a little bit of help with uh, with the black elements um, the black pencil so just to help it out a little bit here and there you know just to kick it up because the black pencil is quite black but doesn't really compare to ink um, in that sense so this is just a nicer, I think a stronger accent. It's just a brush pen. Brush pens are good because you can get thick and thin without changing pens. Kind of handy. So Thicker lines and thinner lines, all in one. I don't think I'll overdo this uh, too much. Um, the other thing, I, I want to try to get the uh, shape now standing out from the grey paper. So you could do two things here, change that tone with white or with black, you know. So I've done um, a lot of it in black. I might um, actually try to create white. But the white, I'm going to not colour in I'm going to try to create this sort of a half-tone texture like that. So what I'm actually doing here is, is highlighting the pencil lines, highlighting the drawing um, by colouring in this element of negative space so that it's different. So I've done a lot of drawings where I've used the black, but I don't want to... Um, I think I'll try something different with the white this time. Just to prove the point that... Uh, what's what's important here is that it's going to be a bit transparent. Um, what's important here is the contrast. So the contrast between the face, the positive space, 
and the negative space. Uh, you can also tell I'm right-handed, which means now I've got to drag over the wet paint to, to paint into the left-hand side. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, we'll see what we can do. Thankfully, the Posca markers tend to dry quite quickly, uh, which is, is going to be handy. I don't know why I'm finishing my sentences with an up. Just tells you that I'm Australian. I love this uh, cross hatch uh, or hatch uh, effect of the paint because it's sort of like a, a, a decorative quality. Um, I would never attempt it with the black because the black is too severe. But I think, you know, the white uh, Posca is quite a nice, um, quite a, it, it looks, it, look, this is my choice. It's not everyone's choice, it's my choice. So that's it. <laughs> I can't really say any more than that. All right, so we're going to use the knuckle of, of my, I'm going to use the knuckle of my hand, the knuckle of my small finger, right, to sort of rest on. This is a, th a thing I use with oil paint as well. When I do it, uh, it's like a, your anatomical mole stick. So it's a resting element so you don't have to rest the palm of your hand on the artwork, of course, which will get transfer of paint everywhere and smudge it and stuff. So you try to pivot from this knuckle. Seems to be working. Yeah, why not? You don't drag things around the picture plane because when you do that, of course, you'll start to smudge it, and uh, that's not a good thing. Now I can rest on my wrist. Again, I'm not going to move them around, so you're pivoting from it. You know, everyone has a different way of holding a pencil, holding an implement. So it's, it's, I mean, habits are hard to break, you know. If they're at all destructive to the picture area, like if you're dragging, then you try to sort of m manipulate or develop something that is not as uh, destructive. Let's uh, pick a size that we can do this. And we have to spell his name out, M A. T, T, double T. Um, go back to the, okay, how are we going to space this then? We start here, G-R-O-E-N-I-N-G. Okay, that'd probably work. So, there he is, um, Matt Groening, the um, creator of The Simpsons and lots and lots of other properties. The Simpsons is an incredible um, feat of um, storytelling and world building in terms of, uh, of animation. And it's a show that we're invested in. So it's... You know, it's a testament to his ability to take something, a premise like this, like the Flintstones, right? And then sort of create uh, a new version of it and make it relevant and fresh. So, you know, again, I want to draw um, Seth MacFarlane, for example. So Seth has done the same thing with Family Guy. And uh, that's really exciting, you know, to see that, that you sort of borrow from but then diverge from into you know a different storytelling method 
uh, but using the basic uh, 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 tools of, of constructing a world that we're invested in. Anyway, that's for another time. This is Matt Gruning, this is Franz Cantor, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.